Live from Washington, D.C., it's Cube Conversations with John Furrier. Hello, welcome to a special Cube Conversation. I'm John Furrier, co-host of the Cube here at Amazon Web Services Public Sector Headquarters in Washington, D.C., actually in Arlington, Virginia. Our next guest is Joel Lipkin, who's the Chief Operating Officer of Four Points Technology. Thanks for joining me today. John, thanks very much. So for we're having, having an innovation day here in DC, getting the lay of the land on <coughs> federal and gov cloud, all things public sector, had an exclusive with Teresa Carlson at AWS. Trying to get the sense of where the change is happening and where the pressure points are. You've been involved in federal for a while. Oh, right. Where's the pressure points? Where's the change and where is it happening? It, it, it's interesting, you know, cloud has been um, the, the, the mantra in federal for since, what, 2011, I think, was the cloud first policy, 2011, 2012. But within the last 18 months or so, we're really seeing a, a hockey stick effect where, where, where all of the missionary work and development work and, and, and technical and cultural changes that have were happening before are, are, are now taking hold and, and, and you're really seeing cloud adoption explode in, in, in the federal space. So there's a hockey stick happening. We're seeing that, people have been observing it. Um, I haven't really seen the hockey stick numbers, yeah. but um, commercial cloud as Amazon's calling it, cloud in general is interesting. Uh, John Woods from Telos was just mm -hmm. on, sharing his perspective that right. it's, the game is going to the cloud eventually. And so, where is the commercial cloud in your mind with respect to in the hands of the practitioners who are either deploying services to the federal government, so you mm -hmm. get the consumption side and the federal side, then you have the channels that are going to be providing those solutions. And in some cases, they were all manual professional services with some software. Now you have cloud, you get some automation, you get some DevOps. How is that channel changing? Well, you know, we, we come to cloud from a, a background very much on provisioning the, the traditional physical data center, servers, storage, networking, application and, and operating system software, security tools. And that business still exists certainly in federal, but the, 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 it's tipped so that um, for, for four points technology, um, cloud provisioning has become actually our largest uh, segment within, within our business within the last of year. In terms of revenue, in terms of mind share, in terms Activity. of new contract <laughs> awards. Um, you know, we've, we've seen the, the, the customer fundamentally change in the last few years from trying out cloud to um, hosting externally facing websites and, and prototype environments in the cloud to now where most of our core customers are, are looking at building uh, virtual enclaves, virtual data centers in a hyperscale cloud and the public cloud, gov cloud, d d depending on their needs. And that's where their focus is going, that's where they're investing their, their technical resources, their training um, focus, so that um, that shift is tur turns you from a um, resale model to very much of a support the, the, the new virtual infrastructure model. I mean, if you think about reselling, I mean, you're essentially bringing a product to a customer in a reselling package in right. a way. I mean, you're still touching the customer on the front lines, you're still providing that value. Now as you shift to, as you see, more activity points to cloud as a consumption, as, as legit, real deal. It, it, it absolutely is. I mean, we're, we're seeing the numbers where, uh, we've been at cloud for slightly over five years now, and um, our first year, I think we did somewhere in the order of $10,000 in sales for a lot of work. A, a lot of- <laughs> It took a lot of pain on that one. And, but and learnings. Lear we learned, our customer learned. We, uh, we, we invested very heavily in figuring out with the customer how to use uh, GWAC contracts, uh, GSA schedule, soup, five, soup four at that time, uh, CIO, CS, uh, basic contracts, figuring out how to bring cloud to those contracts so that it was easy and safe for contracting officers to utilize. And 
you know, that $10,000, we're, we're, we're several thousand times ahead of that now, and, and most of that uh, expansion has been in the last year and a half. Talk about that flywheel or the tipping point, maybe yeah. a better word for it. Um, you know, Teresa Carlson shared you know, some intimate uh, information about her early days and how I mean, she had to grind it out here mm -hmm. in D.C. Yeah. Security was an issue, and they did the work. You guys did the work. This is the pattern, right? At some point, you, you got to jump in and take the leap of faith, do the work. So for folks that are looking to move to the cloud, whether they're on the IT side of the government mm -hmm. or someone who wants to be a service provider in some capacity, what is the legwork now these days? Is it, uh, has it gotten harder or has it gotten easier? Has, is it the same or is it the same formula? You got to pay your dues, do, you, do the work. I, I mean, I think a lot of the missionary work has been done. I mean, in terms of um, contracts being cloud friendly by nature, I think that's happened. I think increasingly you have a educated contracting force within government who understands cloud better and how to procure it. So, so a lot of the mechanical things have, have been done. Um, also, I think there's a lot of success stories out there um, so that customers feel like they're not trailblazing necessarily, maybe within their yes. specific agency, but uh, there, there, there's lots of best practices <laughs> out there. It's lucrative it's a, when you get a hockey stick opportunity, you don't know where you are on the hockey stick, so it still could be a lot more growth. I would there's, think it's still early days. Um, let's talk use cases. Mm -hmm. What use cases are you seeing? How are they evolving? What are some of the low-hanging fruit use cases? Where are the, the higher margin ones? Where do you see the opportunity? Yeah, the um, for, for us, we're, we're in an interesting spot because four points as, 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 as a company tends to do very good contract management, very good program management, um, pre-sales consulting, uh, very focused sales organization on the cloud and, and uh, surrounding software, but we tend to work with partners uh, to deliver services. Um, the, the MSP services, the subject matter experts, we tend to work with, with top partners for that. And for, for us, that, that's worked very well because in some cases you have customers who have those resources in-house already. Uh, sometimes they have systems integrators in-house. And what we found is that in different agencies, um, sometimes you want a different partner who actually understands that agency's mission the best. So I got to ask you about um, product cloud because, you know, remember, you know, go back to the old models of yeah. you know, channels of distribution and resellers, VARs, VABs, they have all different right. acronyms. Um, there's always a mix of multiple vendors all vying for the mind share of the, of the, the partner who mm -hmm. has the customer. Right. In your case, you, you right. guys. Um, so now you have multiple cloud players coming in, Amazon and others. But there's some interesting dynamics in federal that are different than say in the commercial, general commercial space, which is you get classified information. You got sensitive, classified, publicly available. Mm -hmm. So websites, okay, level playing field, but you know, Amazon vis-a-vis -vis others has, yeah. Tremendous investment in um, dealing with government, and that's really it every level. I mean, you, you, you certainly see the, the, the tip of the, the iceberg in the high, highly classified world, but even just to get into the federal space at all in terms of FedRAMP compliance, which is not a one-time large check, it's ongoing, lots of large checks to not just get but to maintain. Um, uh, specialized uh, compliance in terms of uh, healthcare verticals, in terms of uh, law enforcement verticals, significant, significant investments in, in building that infrastructure that then lets our customer issue contracts in which they can use to, to add the extra controls that that specific so agency So not all clouds are the, are, are the same? Not at the agency level and certainly not at, at, at the hyperscale cloud provider level. There's, there, there's very few who make that investment consistently. So you mentioned the activity you guys do in cloud provision. What are some of the, uh, the, the high demand services that they're, they're customers are asking for you guys. Right. Where, where we found a, a sweet spot is um, doing account setup, um, provisioning, support, 
escalation, a lot of um, uh, technical consulting around best practices and architecture um, versus um, the um, managed service provider on ongoing model. What our goal is to get the customer successfully into production as quickly as, as possible because that's why they yeah. bought into the cloud. So um, for, for us, that means really smart provisioning, a lot of architecting with a partner, typically with, with, with AWS and the AWS space, obviously. Um, and sometimes taking that through getting what's called an authority to operate mm -hmm. in, in for the customer or, or doing the work so that they can issue an ATO. On All right, before behalf. the ATO, the authority to operate, right. give me a, uh, just a sample benchmark. It'd be anecdotal, it could be real numbers. You know, five years ago, old way, or 10 years ago, five years ago, whatever the day is. Old way, new way. Months, days, years, minutes, seconds, <laughs> hours. Uh, are there different use it, cases? It, or, is it, there a general it, pattern of time scale that you could share? How much savings is going to be in there? there? There's huge savings to the customer who are picking a, a, a highly compliant cloud environment like Amazon and then building an enclave of agency specific controls on top of that and then ingesting workloads into those agency controls. Because at the end of the day, the issue is, here's a new workload moving into the cloud. How long does it take to get that ATO? And so the best practice we're seeing at, at, at VA, at uh, NASA, at, at, at a number of other agencies, is to, to build that enclave, take as long as is necessary, and then moving workloads in is, is relatively trivial. In the old days, I've heard people having ATO parties. Hey, we get to operate, you know, hey, you yeah. know, months. Now it's routine, it, or not so much, maybe I, getting there, is that? It's easier, and it's uh, for, for, for agencies that are, are, are do going through this process of picking a, the right cloud provider for their needs, mm -hmm. building an enclave, and then ingesting workloads, they're, they're, they're seeing efficiencies there. Final question, what's the challenges that uh, Federal has right now with cloud? Uh, just keeping up demand, what's the top critical challenge and that presents an opportunity for them that they have to uh, hurdle through next? Yeah, uh, that's a great question because there's a lot of things <laughs> going <be>. on <laughs> and, and, and different agencies are at different maturity levels. I had a, a, a chance to talk with a, a CIO yesterday which um, who, whose very interesting view was one of the major blockers that he needs to work through is actually on the, um, the communications and the uh, interface with the internet and, and getting that as streamlined as, as the internal processes around the uh, internal ATO controls. And so I, so I, it depends on the agency. Some have different issues based on what they're trying to do or their scope? Move, exactly, I mean, th a, a, an internal control system is going to be very different than a publicly facing website in, in, in terms of uh, control issues, mm -hmm. certainly. And Any multi-cloud come up with uh, customers or they don't really care, is it just, more, you know? Um, it, it has, our, our most recent award with uh, the, uh, the VA, um, which was, was a large five year, um, roughly $500 million ceiling commitment on the VA's part to, to, to actually make cloud first happen within the agency with all of those benefits. Um, their requirement was to deliver two ATO'd hyperscale clouds on the same contract, and we were able to do that successfully. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, thank you. So take a minute to explain four points, what you guys are doing, where you're succeeding, obviously a lot of cloud provisioning, where are you guys going? It sounds like you got a great you know, safety net for customers on some critical operations if they need escalation and support. Certainly getting provisioned is key. Right. Um, what, what's your main business now? How you guys uh, see the outlook of the next year? Right, um, thanks. Uh, Four Points uh, really is, has built ourselves into, I think, a pretty significant cloud provider to the federal government. We found a niche that works for us, which is built around provisioning 
and um, growing that as needed with either third-party services or internal support capabilities, and very much focused on either edu helping the customer educate themselves through, through training on, on best practices, sometimes retraining data center personnel, traditional data center personnel in cloud, um, working with integrators who are already very knowledgeable about uh, agency missions. And uh, I, th I, I think, uh, you know, nothing lasts forever, but I think that model is gonna stand us in good stead for at least another year. <laughs> 10, maybe 10. Well, it's looking pretty good. We'll see. Well, there's always going to be more abstraction layers, more op opportunities to automate, but I think, right. again, the, the service delivery model is changing. You're on the wave. It, it is, and I think um, as, as we get smarter and as tools evolve, I think providing more automation for the customer and internally is going to be a, a big part of And your relationship with Amazon Web Services, what's that relationship with these guys? Uh, it's outstanding. Um, we uh, were an early adopter um, with Amazon uh, with a slightly different model in that we're not primarily a services company, we're a uh, provisioning company, uh, whether it's uh, physical or, or, or logical in the cloud. And um, they, they've adapted to us, and I think we've seen a lot of mutual benefit. We, we work a lot of programs together. Joel Lipkin, thanks for coming on and sharing your insight with me today, appreciate it. This is theCUBE conversation here at AWS, Amazon Web Services, public sector headquarters in Arlington, Virginia, right outside Washington, D.C., theCUBE on the ground all week. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.